Level 0. You wake up, the lights work, the Wi-Fi connects, your GPS knows exactly where you are, the world hums with precision, trains on time, satellites in sync, banks balancing billions by the second. And above all of it, beyond the clouds, beyond the ozone, beyond the blinking satellites, burns a star, the sun. You don't notice it, you expect it. But 93 million miles away, it's watching everything. Today, it's calm. Solar scientists call this the quiet phase of the sun's 11-year cycle. There are no flares, no sunspots, no magnetic snarls in its atmosphere. The solar wind is steady, a background stream of charged particles. It brushes past Earth's magnetic field like wind on a windshield. And the Earth, our fragile blue marble, is ready. A vast magnetic cocoon surrounds us, the magnetosphere. It deflects solar wind, shields astronauts, blocks cosmic radiation. It keeps the grid alive. It keeps the lights on. No headlines, no flickers, no alarms. You text a friend. You scroll through photos. You fly through space at 1,000 miles an hour, surrounded by electric systems that all just work. This is level zero, the baseline of human civilization in the space age. A truce, a balance, a cosmic breath held. But the sun is not a machine. It doesn't do routine. It does eruptions. Level 1. Far away, the sun twitches. A dark smudge appears, a coronal hole, like a tear in the solar atmosphere. It opens briefly and lets something leak. Not light, not heat, but a solar wind stream, slightly faster, slightly denser than usual. A whisper in the language of space. Somewhere, in a lab, an instrument reacts. The KP index ticks upward. KP3, someone says aloud, mild geomagnetic activity. No alerts, no need. To the average person, nothing changes. But at the magnetic poles, the sky begins to respond. Auroras dance just a little farther than they should, bright greens and reds flirting with the edges of the Arctic Circle. Pilots glance upward, scientists take photos. The rest of the world continues on, unaware. Some satellites log tiny orbital adjustments. Airlines log the event and file it. Power grids remain stable. Substations barely twitch. This is level one. The sun has shifted, just slightly. A nudge, not a punch. A warning, not a wound. But in this quiet flicker, the chain of causality begins. Level two. Now the sun gets impatient. A CME, coronal mass ejection, bursts from the solar surface. Not a big one, but it's pointed at Earth. A billion tons of plasma, moving at millions of kilometers per hour, riding the solar wind like a bullet through fog. It races across space in two to three days. NOAA issues a G1 warning. Space weather blogs light up. You might see it buried in a science section. Minor geomagnetic storm expected Friday. On arrival, Earth's magnetic field absorbs the hit and flexes. Auroras surge, not just in Alaska or Lapland, now in Scotland, in Maine, maybe even northern Germany. People notice, phones come out, photos get posted. What are those lights? Is that normal? Meanwhile, spacecraft respond. Low Earth orbit satellites are pushed downward slightly by atmospheric expansion, caused by high energy particles heating the upper atmosphere. Controllers make orbital corrections. Aircraft flying transpolar routes see minor high-frequency HF radio disruptions. Messages bounce, controllers reroute. Nothing crashes, but everything adjusts. Ground systems stay functional, but grid operators flag irregularities. Microcurrents induced by the magnetic field ripple through long conductors, pipelines, transmission lines, rail systems. Minor, but measurable. This is level two. Still calm, but no longer invisible. The sun has made itself known, and Earth is listening. Level 3. Then it gets louder. A solar flare, classified M-class, erupts from an unstable region near the sun's equator. This time, it's paired with a faster, heavier CME, arrival under 24 hours. Space weather centers issue a G2 alert. Airlines are told to avoid polar routes for the next 48 hours. Satellite operators begin downloading critical data and switching systems into safe mode. The CME arrives like a rolling tide of fire. Auroras are now visible over New York, London, Moscow. Tourists gather on rooftops. Social media explodes. But above your head, satellites struggle. 
charged particles punch through circuitry, data packets corrupt, attitude control systems jitter, some go offline temporarily, the ISS takes shelter, astronauts retreating to shielded areas. The radiation isn't lethal, but it's real. GPS signals drift, not much, just a few meters. But for autonomous systems, for military ops, for emergency landing paths, it matters. Power companies brace, transformer stations monitor harmonics. In some cases, protective relays trip automatically to prevent damage. Submarine cables, they hum. Induced currents slither across oceans. Engineers record anomalies. This is level three, the tipping point where solar storms interfere with daily function. Still recoverable, still temporary. But you notice now, because the sun is in your sky and in your life. Level four. This is not a drill. An X-class solar flare, the strongest category, erupts from a massive sunspot group. The flare triggers a fast CME traveling at nearly 2,500 kilometers per second. The sun is throwing a punch with both fists. Global warnings go out. N-A-S-A, E-S-A, N-O-A-A. G3 storm expected. Prepare for infrastructure interference. Airlines reroute everything. Polar flights canceled. Satellite-based navigation deemed unreliable. The storm arrives like a slap. Earth's magnetic field contracts. The auroral oval swells toward the equator. People in Texas see green skies, so do those in Beijing and Rome. Satellites report radiation alarms. Some shut down, others lose contact. SpaceX halts launches. NASA postpones missions. Oil pipelines detect strange voltages. Data centers see server resets. Radio blackouts hit HF and VHF frequencies. Military comms drop across the Arctic. At ground level, transformers scream, literally. Substations overheat. Control rooms watch dials spike. Some areas in Scandinavia and North America experience local blackouts. Not total, but meaningful. Hospitals switch to generator backup. Airports delay flights due to navigational uncertainty. Emergency management centers activate. News anchors explain what a geomagnetic storm is. It's suddenly relevant. This is level four. When solar storms become national security issues, when infrastructure takes damage, when people realize that space weather isn't science fiction, it's tonight. Level 5. This isn't theoretical anymore. It's historical. March 13, 1989, Quebec. A storm of this size hit before. The CME slammed into Earth. Within 90 seconds, the entire Quebec power grid failed. Six million people plunged into darkness. Power transformers melted. $13 billion in damages, and that was before the internet. Now, the same kind of storm hits again, only we're more vulnerable. Smart grids, GPS agriculture, satellite internet, global finance. Every layer of life is digital. The flare was X20, stronger than 1989. The CME arrives in under 19 hours. Everything is locked down. Space agencies go dark. Every backup activated. Auroras, visible from Mexico City, from Cairo, from Bangkok. Satellites drop like flies, not destroyed, but disabled. Communication outages spread. Military satellites go into hardened shutdowns. In some regions, power grids collapse. Not brownouts, blackouts. The interconnection works against us. Failures cascade. Some transformers catch fire, others detonate. Hospitals face hours without grid power. Data centers scramble for backup fuel. Air traffic halts over entire regions. Without navigation or comms, it's too risky. On Earth, billions feel the ripple. Wi-Fi gone, cell towers offline, ATMs freeze, banks stall, people begin to panic. Is this the big one? This is level five, the maximum observed level of geomagnetic destruction in recorded human history. Not extinction, not collapse, but it's a warning shot, and we've already seen it once. The only question is, what if the next one is worse? The following levels are fictional extrapolations based on scientific modeling of extreme solar storm scenarios. These events have not occurred, but are possible under worst case conditions. Level six. It didn't miss this time. A CME the size of a planet, dense as iron, is hurtling toward Earth. An X-45 class solar flare, the biggest in modern memory. It travels fast, 
2,000 kilometers per second, impact in 17 hours. NASA issues a rare Level 5 alert, but this is beyond Level 5. Satellites are turned, planes rerouted, power grids go into protected mode where they can. Then it hits. The magnetosphere roars, a global shockwave of magnetic compression. Charged particles hammer through the upper atmosphere, and suddenly, everything surges. Transformers explode. Not a trip, not shut down. Explode, power grids in multiple countries collapse within minutes. North America, Western Europe, large parts of Asia. Gone, substations fry, circuit breakers melt, high-voltage transformers, each weighing over 100 tons, each taking months to replace, become scrap metal. Hospitals switch to backup power, water pumps stop, cell towers fail one by one, satellites begin spinning, burning through their onboard batteries trying to stabilize, GPS is out, air traffic grinds to a halt, communications fragment into chaos. Some regions still have power, for now, but the global network is broken, and in the dark, coordination dies. This is Level 6, a complete breakdown of electrical infrastructure in developed nations. Not fictional, just extreme. We knew this was possible. We just didn't think it would happen. Level 7 It's been three days. The lights haven't come back, not because no one's trying, but because no one can. The equipment is fried, the backups are gone, and the factories that build the parts, they don't have power either. International flights are grounded, airspace is silent, ports have become parking lots of stalled cargo ships, railway signals are dead, fuel pipelines can't pump, cities run on emergency reserves, and then they run out. Governments declare national emergencies, not just one, all of them, borders close, embassies evacuate, trade freezes, you used to swipe a card for groceries, now you wait in line with cash, if the register even works. Most places just stop selling and start rationing. Every country looks inward. Fuel hoarding, water storage, martial law in some regions, in others, chaos. Some militaries step up to maintain order, others collapse from within. On the news, when you can find a working television, world leaders speak from candlelit rooms, promising calm, calling for patience. They don't sound calm. The internet works in fragments, peer to peer, old forums come back, radio becomes king again. You're told to stay home, boil water, avoid unnecessary travel, do not panic. But grocery store shelves are empty, ATMs don't work, and outside you hear people shouting. This is level 7, a fractured planet, not destroyed, just severed. Every nation for itself, every neighborhood, eventually too. Level 8 It's been four weeks, still no national grid, still no satellites. You've adapted, sort of. You charge your phone with a solar panel, not to make calls, but to use the flashlight. You cook with fire, wash clothes by hand, you walk to get water, you walk to get news, and most days, there's no news to get. Across the world, massive cities begin to empty. Without power, water, or food logistics, skyscrapers become tombs. People move inland, towards small towns, away from population centers that no longer function. Rural communities thrive, if they were prepared. Old farmers, preppers, villages with wells, places with seeds and tools instead of code and cables. You hear rumors of digital reboots, tech hubs trying to rebuild servers, factories restarting by generator, but none of it reaches you. Communication is local now. Ham radios, paper notes, face to face. Banks have collapsed. Digital money? Useless. Gold is heavy. People trade sugar for batteries, antibiotics for fuel, Knives for everything. Governments haven't disappeared. They've just shrunk to what they can physically control. The world hasn't ended. But it's no longer a world, just a scattered mosaic of isolated systems. This is level eight, not an apocalypse, but a reversion, a time machine dragging civilization backward in real time, all because the sun lost its temper. Level nine. Five years later, you haven't heard from the other side of the world since the first storm. You assume it still exists, but you don't know. The skies are quiet, no contrails, no satellites. The stars are clearer than ever, but no one is looking through telescopes. They're too busy surviving. Children grow up without knowing what the internet was. They know fire, mud, rope. They learn to forage, to farm, 
To stay warm without power, you remember climate-controlled rooms, washing machines, doorbells. Now, those memories feel like fairy tales. Old hard drives are scavenged like relics, not for reuse, for parts. Someone shows you a Kindle once, still charged. The words still glow. It's a miracle. You read it in silence, surrounded by people. No one else can. Most digital libraries were never printed. They're gone. You hear of pockets of technology, self-sustaining facilities in Scandinavia, in Patagonia, in the Rockies. Places with stored knowledge, solar arrays, seed vaults, medicine. You don't know if they're real. No one does. Cities still stand. Skyscrapers loom, cold, empty. But progress has reversed. The global supply chain? Gone. Space travel? Gone. Digital systems? Mostly gone. The solar storm didn't just destroy infrastructure. It interrupted continuity. And now, humanity climbs back up the ladder, barefoot and blinking. This is level 9, where survival outpaces ambition. Where history books become how-to manuals. And the question isn't how fast we can advance, but whether we can remember how. Level 10. 50 years later, the earth is green again. Forests have crept into suburbs. Deer drink from mall fountains. Wolves nest in parking garages. Birdsong echoes through city halls. The sun still rises, indifferent, consistent. Its cycle long reset. No new storms, just silence. And on the ground, humans remain. Fewer, scattered, resourceful. You walk past crumbling solar panels overtaken by vines. Old wind turbines stand like fossils. Radio towers bend and rust. Children run barefoot over cracked pavement. They do not know what it once was. Only that the world used to be loud, and now it's quiet. In a library, half collapsed, half forgotten, you find pages, paper, ink, diagrams, notes. The remnants of a species that reached for the stars. You keep it, you share it, you build, slowly. The infection of electricity has been burned out. But so has the infection of overdependence. What rises next is smaller, softer, maybe wiser. Level 10 isn't extinction, it's a correction. Not by a virus and not by a war, but by the sun. The same star that gave us light, gave us energy, gave us life. And when we flew too close, it reminded us. You don't conquer the sun, you live beneath it, and you listen. With this, we come to the end of our video. Keep loving our content and subscribe for more content like this.